restaurants, uh, dining in, places of worship, movie theaters, and museums are now allowed to conduct indoor operations with modifications. Breaking news, the state gives the okay for many businesses to reopen in San Diego County. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. And I'm Marcella Lee and tonight for Barbara Lee Edwards. This all came about after the governor today unveiled a new color based tier system to determine which counties are progressing best in the fight over COVID-19. The different tiers also indicate what businesses can open up again and to what capacity. News 8's Heather Hope explains how it all works and what will be opening back up in this breaking news alert. The governor introduced his four color coded county COVID tier system. San Diego County is in the red, which gives the green light to so many businesses to reopen. COVID-19 will be with us for a long time. Announcing a new four tier system, Governor Gavin Newsom laid out the plan. We're looking at these four tiers, color coded, making it a little simpler for folks, purple, uh, red, orange and yellow. Starting Monday, hair salons and barbershops can open indoors with modifications. Then all retail, shopping centers, malls, swap meets, indoors at 50% capacity. Also museums, zoos and aquariums can open indoors at 25% capacity. But professional sports still cannot have live audiences. Bars and breweries that don't serve food are still closed. This is trying to strike a balance between economic viability and uh, protecting the public's health. San Diego County is in the red or substantial tier doing better than most counties in California in widespread purple. But local health officials say San Diegans must remain vigilant. The new system won't impact the reopening of schools K-12, through which can start September 1st. In each tier, in order to move out of those tiers, there's now a 21-day mandatory wait time. For us in red, places of worship can reopen indoors with a maximum of 25% or 100 people. The same for movie theaters. Then hotels can open with modifications and gyms too at 10% capacity. But not all leaders are pleased with the state's new tier system. People always ask, why is this open? Why is that not open? Why can we go indoors here and we can't go indoors other places? Why am I eating on a dirty sidewalk when it's much cleaner inside the restaurant? In a statement, County Supervisor Jim Desmond says the announcement by the governor is not not enough. It's just more tinkering and choosing of winners or losers. While I'm pleased to see some industries to be allowed to open, while others continue to suffer greatly, state government continues to confuse people and paralyze the economy. I just want to be very clear that the more people uh, follow these strategies, the better we will be. And again, starting on Monday, August 31st, those businesses can reopen, even some indoors, with modifications. Heather Hope, News 8. Thanks, Heather. And tonight, we're learning more about a deadly Army training accident off the coast of San Clemente Island. Two soldiers were killed and three were injured. This happened last night and involved a Black Hawk helicopter. News 8's Alicia Summers is at Scripps La Jolla, where the survivors are receiving care. We do not know the conditions of the three soldiers transported here after the deadly accident. The U.S. Army tells us all five were part of special operations and the incident happened during routine training. A local military source tells News 8 they were notified at 746 last night of a helicopter crash. The Hilo described as a Black Hawk. There is some confusion as to where this deadly accident happened. The U.S. Army says it happened near Coronado. Our local military source says the incident happened on San Clemente Island, which is about 70 miles west of Coronado, the same island where eight Marines and a sailor died in June during an AAV accident. The soldiers were reportedly from the Army's 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment out of Fort Campbell, Kentucky. The U.S. Army Special Operations Command spokesperson would only give a statement reading. An element of U.S. Army Special Operations Command was conducting routine training in the vicinity of Coronado, California on August 27th when an aircraft incident occurred. Two soldiers were killed and three were injured. The area has been secured and an investigation into the incident is underway. More information will be released 24 hours following next of kin notification. Our sincere condolences go out to the family and friends of the deceased. The Army is also requesting that we not contact any family members during this very difficult time. We still don't know the identities of the five soldiers or where they're from. Again, this is an ongoing investigation. Stay with News 8 for any updates. Carlo and Marcella. Thank you, Alicia. 
Funeral services were held today for Chase Sweetwood, one of the Marines killed during military training last month, also off San Clemente Island. He was in an amphibious vehicle that sank. Teresa Sardina is outside the gates of Miramar National Cemetery with more. We're here at the Miramar National Cemetery. It was a very emotional entrance of the Sweet Hood family driving through with the hearse and Marine Corps leaders. Today, family and the community is honoring the American hero. And the service starts at 1115, starting off with a flag line and military honors. It's a beautiful day here out at Miramar National Cemetery in the family of Lance Corporal Chase Sweetwood, 19, and the U.S. Marine Corps invited the Patriot Guard Riders to escort their hero's funeral service in honor of the fallen hero Camp Pendleton Marine who died in a military training accident. Lance Corporal Sweetwood was assigned to Bravo Company 15th Marine Expeditionary Unit when he perished with his other Marine brothers during a training exercise aboard an amphibious assault vehicle that sank hundreds of feet off San Clemente Island on July 30th. After an intense search rescue, the remains were recovered on August 7th. Military officials transferred the remains of seven U.S. Marines and a Navy sailor to Dover Air Force Base in Delaware to be prepared for burial. The family waiting for weeks for their son to return home to honor him. I want his body back so we can put him to sleep. Put him down. Uh, it's it's been it's been really hard knowing that their bodies are are have been in that vehicle and so far down. And I think from the beginning of this we knew we knew I, I think our, our souls knew these boys were not floating in the water. I think we knew that they were in this, in this tank. The Chula Vista native turned 19 during the search. The accident happened a day after his birthday. He is survived by his family, friends, and brotherhood of Marines. And something that we had noticed earlier at the service was a horse and carriage, a beautiful white horse in closed carriage with windows. And that's where they're gonna place the casket of Sweetwood in for his final ride. Marcelo and Carlo. Thanks, Teresa. San Diego County is reporting one new community outbreak, but the total number is now down to 14 over the past seven days. The county's trigger number is seven. 285 new cases of COVID-19 are being reported out of more than 8,800 tests. That's a positive rate of 3.2%, just below the 14-day rolling average of 3.6%. The total number of cases is now at 37,784, with more than 33,000 recovered. Three new deaths were reported, bringing that total to 676. We're being shut down for nearly six months due to the coronavirus, SeaWorld San Diego is welcoming back guests for a limited time starting today. Guests will be able to visit outdoor attractions and there will still be shows with distant seating. It's all part of the park's Zoo Days Bayside Barbecue and Brews experience. So if you actually look at any of our uh, venues, they're marked where people are going to sit. We're at half capacity and you're not going to sit right next to somebody. You're going to see a row in between people. The park plans to keep this experience going every Friday through Sunday from now until September 27th, plus Labor Day. The park is limiting the number of people who can come in each day, and so you'll have to make a reservation. There will also be mask requirements and temperature screenings. Not everyone was happy about the reopening of SeaWorld San Diego today. PETA supporters showed up outside the park with signs to protest the reopening. They are calling for an end to the breeding of whales and dolphins and the release of these animals. Well, after weeks of hot weather, finally some cooler temperatures across the county. What can we expect for this weekend? Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Carleen Chavis with a first look at your microclimate forecast. Carly and I was at the uh, beach for a couple hours this morning. I can't quite feel the uh, reduction in temperature, but I'll, I'll trust you that it is getting cooler. <laughs> It hasn't necessarily happened yet. We won't really notice it until we hit this weekend into next week, Marcella. Now, temperatures were a couple degrees cooler today, just by a degree or two, but it was still hot. So taking a look at our highs that we hit today, we had 90s going strong for the inland valleys, also 90 degrees in Julian, 115 for the desert, 70s and still 80 degrees in Del Mar, but 70s along the coast, 78 for downtown. So we still have that excessive heat warning that's in play through tonight, and that's for the desert, but then 
we're talking about going below seasonal. Seasonal for tomorrow for the coast and then a couple degrees below that on Sunday and Monday. So that's where your relief is. That's when we're going to start to have those temperatures really dropping down below the seasonal norm. And the coolest day for the inland valleys looks to be on Monday at 84 degrees. So we're switching it up in the forecast as we go into the next few days, which would be nice. Nice little break from the heat, but we do have more that is on the way. You'll see that in your complete forecast coming up. Back to you, Carlo. I like the sound of all that. Thanks, Carlene. The San Diego County is hiring site managers to operate polling locations for the November election. How to apply when we come back. Plus, a News 8 throwback 24 years ago when San Diego hosted the Republican National Convention. Thousands have gathered in the nation's capital for the 57th anniversary of the March on Washington. I'm Natalie Brand with the significance across generations.